In this video, we're going to talk about me switching to the Z Flip 5 from my iPhone 14 Pro. Yes, almost a lifetime iPhone user is going to be switching to an Android. So I'm deep into the Apple ecosystem. I've got an Apple Watch, I've got Apple TVs, I use a Mac primarily, and most of my things just work with iPhone. So this was definitely going to be a big move switching to Android. Now, what I've always been jealous of is Android users have a variety of different phones that they can switch to. So in the past few years, we've seen flip and foldables come out, but there's just always been various different sizes that you can switch to as well. iPhone has pretty much stayed the same with the odd mini and plus size phones coming out during this time as well. So not only switching from iPhone to Android, but also switching to a completely different form factor was going to be a big step. Now to start off, when I was setting up the Z Flip 5, it asked if I wanted to transfer all my files from my iPhone to it. Now, this sounded great. However, I didn't find the process to be that smooth. Although my contacts did come over, none of my photos were. I expect this is because I use iCloud and half the photos aren't actually stored on the device. Another part of the process that I found not to be so smooth was that I had to download all of my apps myself from the Play Store. I'm baffled that there's no way that they auto download from the iPhone. Things did start to get a bit smoother once I finally downloaded all my apps and managed to sign into them all as well. And I was finally able to enjoy the Flip 5. I personally love small phones. So having one that folded in half was truly amazing. I never got tired of it. The build quality is really sturdy as well. I didn't feel like it was going to break at any point. The phone really only got used at places like home and at the office, plus on the occasional shopping trip. So it didn't get to experience places like the beach where it may have incurred damage due to sand or other small objects. We've all heard those horror stories. Okay, let's move on to one of the most important reasons that I have a smartphone, the cameras. Now, I knew going into this that the cameras themselves wouldn't match up to my iPhone 14 Pro. For a start, there's just less of them. So I was always going to miss out on that telephoto lens. However, what I wasn't expecting was them to just feel a little bit laggy and slow. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is the cameras or the processor or just me not being used to Android, but they just didn't feel so snappy. This meant that I felt that I was actually missing shots and it just made the whole experience not very enjoyable. Adding on to this, when I was taking photos of my dog, which I do quite a lot, they always came out just a little bit out of focus because he's constantly moving around. Now, if you do have good lighting and a subject that doesn't like to move around all the time, you can get some pretty nice sharp photos from it. I don't want you to be discouraged thinking these cameras aren't good. They're just not quite as good as the flagships are at the moment. Now, one of the things that I thought I would use is the outside screen when taking photos. I thought this was great when we first unboxed the device. However, I'm sad to say that I never used it. Now, the outside screen is useful for other things though. I did actually use it to manage my notifications quite a bit and just check up on things like the weather also. It was nice not having to open the phone up and just being able to double tap that display and swipe through what I wanted. Now, this leads me on to obviously the main screen. It is the perfect size in my opinion. It's thin enough that it's nice and easy to hold. However, it's large enough that content doesn't feel like it's squeezed on. At no point did I feel like this screen was at less quality than my iPhone 14 Pro. However, that crease, we have to talk about it. Honestly, it was frustrating for me. It, because it's in the center of the screen, your thumb is constantly touching it when you're scrolling. Add to this the fact that I use light mode most of the time, you actually see the text and stuff go through it and it's just very distracting. It honestly is the worst part of this phone for me. Now, I did get slightly used to it from the fact that I just started to scroll a little bit lower, but the crease never went away for me. I went into this thinking, oh yeah, you'll get used to it just like the notch. However, it, it's still there. Now, what I will say, there's definitely a distinction on where the crease matters. Say, if you're watching a video, it tended not to get in the way. The only time I really noticed it while I was on YouTube was just because light was reflecting off it a little bit different than the rest of the screen. Where I noticed it most was when I was researching something or just scrolling through Twitter. 
that's because you're touching it and you sort of see the text sort of go up and down almost like a roller coaster. It's an odd experience and you really have to try it to see if you can get used to it. Now this leads me on to my last point and one that I was actually quite worried about moving to this device, battery life. Now I'd heard loads of bad stories about the previous fourth generation flip phone being awful with battery life. Thankfully, the Flip 5 never died on me. I always had enough battery life to make it through the day. This being said, I'm not a power user. I also charge my phone frequently when I go to and from the office using Android Auto, so it always has a little bit of a top up before I go home. Where I did notice the battery going a little bit low was at the weekends. This was purely because I was just at home and didn't actually top it up if I was driving anywhere. This meant I was ending the day with about 10 to 15%, whereas when I was driving to and from the office, I would usually end the day with 25 to 30. Now, in conclusion, I really like the Flip 5. I think it's a massive upgrade over the previous generation, and I have to say, before it came out, I thought this outside screen would be a little bit of a gimmick, but it's actually quite usable. Does this mean that I'm ready to swap my iPhone for it? Unfortunately, no. There's too many drawbacks, in my opinion. The cameras, for one, and the fact the battery, although it does last a day, you don't really have a reserve with it. Now, although I'm not ready for a flip phone just yet, it doesn't mean that I'm not ready for Android. Overall, other than the start, it's definitely been a smooth experience. It's a lot more stable than it used to be, and I still love the customization that you can have. I also love what Samsung and Google are doing with flip and folding phones. Just trying something new and creating a different form factor is interesting and it gives people like me, tech nerds, something to look forward to. Compare this to Apple that just really released the same four phones every year and I have to say it looks a little bit boring. I love that the consumer on the Android side has a choice of what phone they want to have. There's different sizes and flip and folding phones for everyone. Anyway, I've been Mark. I hope you've enjoyed this video. The rest of our Flip 5 content is down below and I'll see you in the next one.